Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of Quran and Science. This is your host, Tamir Mumtaz. We are pleased to have, as usual, Professor Zaghlul al-Naggar, Head of Committee of Scientific Facts and Glorious Quran, Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs. We are also pleased to have Brother Mustafa and Brother Fuad. Today, Dr. Zaghlul will explain to us the creation of the universe uh, regarding the ayah uh, number 47 in Adhariyat, in Surat Adhariyat. We'll now listen to a recitation of this ayah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء بنيناها بأيد وإنا لموسعون And the firmament we built with might, and indeed we will expand its vastness. In the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe, and of everything that's in it, I greet you all in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One of the realities of our time uh, is the fact that we are living in a steadily expanding universe. This expansion was never known until the early part of the 20th century and was not confirmed until the middle of the 1930s. And that's why when we find this fact uh, spelled out very precisely in the Holy Quran, a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to an unlettered prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in an unlettered society it must strike in your mind that there can never ever be any source of that knowledge at that early time in the history of man other than the creator himself the quran reads bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa samaa banaynaha bi-aydin wa inna la musi'un the firmament we have built with might, with knowledge, with wisdom. The firmament we have built with might, knowledge, and wisdom, and verily we will keep it steadily expanding. Who would have known this 14 centuries ago other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The human knowledge came to know this only at the very first uh, decades in the 20th century. Scientists observed the fact that if a train is far away from you and is whistling and you are standing on the station, on the platform of the station, as long as the train is far away from you, you will listen to this whistling at a very low tone. And this tone rises up gradually as the train approaches the station. And as the train leaves the station, the tone lowers on gradually until it disappears. This made scientists conclude that voice is uh, transported in waves, which they call sound waves. And they pondered, can light also travel in waves? And they started carrying a similar experiment. And the experiment was a source of light uh, received in a, a glass prism and of course when light passes through a, a glass prism it uh, is differentiated in its so different uh, wavelengths so if the source of light 
is uh, drifting away from me. I noticed that all the uh, all the colors of the white light drift towards the red side. And if he is approaching towards me, we find all the colors, all the wavelengths drift towards the blue side. So it became a known fact that uh, drifting towards the red side uh, of the spectra um, means that the source of light is drifting away from you. And uh, they call this the red shift. And if the source of light is drifting towards you, is traveling towards you, the whole uh, spectra will shift towards the blue, blue color. Um, and they call this the blue shift. When scientists started looking at the stars in an attempt to study the observed universe, they were struck by the fact that all the stars they were recording or observing, or the largest majority of them, were actually drifting away from us. Towards the red side. Towards the red side, yes. Mm. So they wondered, is that true? Can it be possible that stars are drifting away from us? What would govern the linkage between these stars? Where is the role of gravity mm. if the stars are drifting away from us? Mm. To what end this universe is going to? So the argument went on between the beginning of the 20th century until the middle of the 1930s when it became an established fact measured from different parts of the world that what is actually drifting away from us are the galaxies. And the galaxy is a collection of stars, like our own galaxy. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, uh, is considered to have one million, million stars. Doctor, sorry to interrupt, but who was taking these studies? Mainly? Uh, astronomers. Yes, like from... What uh, from America, from Europe, from many different Mainly non-Muslims. Uh, mainly non-Muslims, yes. you see. Okay. So uh, w they found that the galaxies drift away from us. And as they drift away from us at speeds that can approach the speed of light, yes. almost 300,000 kilometers per second, and matter and energy are being created of nowhere, we don't know where they come from, oh. to fill the gap, because if there is any gap in the universe, it will collapse. So they became an established fact that we are living in a universe that is, is steadily expanding. And they described our universe as a steadily expanding universe. When we come back to the verse in Surah Al-Variyat, uh -huh. the firmament we have built with might, and verily, we will keep it expanding all the time. We will verily keep it expanding. And uh, the, the word lamusi'un um, really uh, connotes that it is uh, currently expanding and it will keep on expanding in the future. Yes. So uh, this is one of the basic facts in astronomy of today that did not come to the notice of human beings until the uh, middle uh, 1930s for uh, the Quran to spell it out mm -hmm. that clearly a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to an unlettered Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an unlettered society must uh, really attract the attention of any fair observer that this particular fact cannot be the work of, of, of man it has to be the word of the Creator Himself. And that's why I consider this verse one of the uh, most clear, obvious signs about the scientific precision of the glorious Quran. And one of the testimonies that this cannot be the work of man. Yes. But th this uh, explains what is happening now. Yes. But does this explain how it, it contributed in the creation of the universe? Yes, because you see, the expansion of the universe uh, was the clue to man to understand how the universe was created. Okay. It was the main clue because they said if we go back uh, against time with this process of expansion, all matter and energy, all space and time will be condensed 
into one tiny little entity. This tiny little entity exploded. It changed it into smoke. And out of that smoke, the earth and the other heavenly bodies were created. And actually, this initial smoke was photographed by the Hubble telescope at the extremities of the observed universe. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, once this telescope has exceeded the limit of the clouds and exceeded the limits of pollution of the atmosphere, it could send back excellent photographs that could not be photographed from the Earth itself. Yes. So the initial smoke from which the Earth and the other heavenly body bodies were created was physically photographed by the Hubble telescope. And uh, we find a verse in the Holy Quran that will also testify to its scientific purity when Allah says, ثم استوى إلى السماء وهي دخان فقال لها وللأرض إتيا طوعا أو كرها قال تأتينا طائعين meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in explaining the process of creation of the universe he said in a particular phase in a particular stage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, was bestowed on top of this universe on top of this firmament um, while it was all in a smoke ثم استوى إلى السماء وهي دخان فقال لها وللأرض then he said he ordered the earth and the other heavenly bodies to be to come into being and they came into being obediently فقال لها الأرض إتيا طبعا وكرها come willingly or unwillingly فقالت أتينا طاعين they said we will come in willing obedience and إن شاء الله we can elaborate on that verse Later. More, if you like, but if the, you have any queries yes, about yes, the first part yes. of the uh, discussion, I would be more than glad to answer. Yeah, I, actually, I'm very happy that uh, every every single fact that uh, modern science discover nowadays, we always find a sign in the Quran that is pointing out to it, and I'm I'm also um, uh, um, very happy that the scholars are accepting them. Unlike in the old days, like when uh, Galileo, mm -hmm. for instance, when he invented the telescope. And when he talked about that the, the, the earth is uh, oval shape, they, they uh, accused him of being crazy. And, uh, and he was sentenced. And, uh, he was you know, killed for he, that. That's it. <laughs> he was killed for that. So yeah. that's... Uh, now this shows the difference between an authentic divine revelation in the Holy Quran yes. and uh, a divine revelation in which we, we believe in its original sources, but it has been tampered with by men, has been infiltrated with lots of human ideas and have been distorted, have been taken out of its divine context as we see it in the Old Testament and uh, in the New Testament as well because the, this is not the pure divine revelation that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as Muslims believe that Allah has sent down um, many revelations. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted to have said that Allah has sent down for the guidance of man 120,000 prophets. And Allah has chosen from this large number of prophets 315 messengers. Man does not have in his hands today 315 divine books. You see, we have only uh, the Holy Quran and we have the Old Testament and the New Testament. Allah did not send down a book called the Old Testament or the New Testament. These are man-made uh, uh, names or coined by man, names coined by man. Uh, Allah has sent down the Torah. Allah has sent down the books of Abraham. And nobody can claim that uh, he has the books of Abraham. He sent down the Torah. Uh, uh, he sent down the Mazamin uh, Psalms of David. He sent down the Injil, uh, the book of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But he did not send down a book called Old Testament and New Testament. Mm -hmm. This is human work. Yes, were the visions made by human. And they made yes. by human indeed. And okay. even uh, these books in t contained into these testaments are not the, uh, in the original language. They were changed by humans. They were we will uh, stop translated into languages doctors, other than the language of Revelation, were infiltrated by lots of human ideas, were distorted a lot. And that's why they could not keep guidance to, uh, yes. to its followers. Okay, we'll stop now for a short break and yes. we'll continue later with Dr. Zalud. Thank you very much.
Allah the Most High and Merciful says, Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair preaching. Do you want to join Huda in calling to Allah? Do you want to spread the message like the prophets did? Do you want to share in the blessings and rewards? Why not support Huda towards these noble aims? Why not sponsor a program of your choice? If you would like to help Huda in spreading the correct message of Islam, please send an email to support at huda.tv or call plus two zero one four three two seven one double seven one for more details or fax plus two zero two three eight triple five two five one Welcome back, dear viewers. Continuing with Professor Al Najjar on the expansion of the universe and the creation of the universe, we'll continue this episode. Uh, now we'll listen to a recitation of the ayah number 11 from Surah Fussilat, after which Dr. Al Najjar will explain to us how this ayah can contribute to our understanding of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our universe. Then he turned towards the heaven when it was smoke and said to it and the earth, Come, both of you, willingly or unwillingly. They said, We come willingly. Uh, we mentioned that uh, one of the realities of our time is that we are living in a steadily expanding universe. Yes. And uh, astronomers and physical, phys uh, astronomical physicists uh, claim that if we go back against time with this expansion, all matter and energy in our universe, all space and time, will coalesce together into a tiny entity that cannot be even seen by the naked eye. And that entity was uh, having an immense density. And, uh, of course, in their point of view, they believe that this was in uh, an unstable condition and it had to explode in what they call the Big Bang Theory. Yes. And as it exploded, it changed into smoke. For centuries, they kept on saying, um, into over decades, they kept on saying um, a dust theory. It changed, it broke down into dust. Um, the Holy Quran which was revealed more than 14 centuries ago, calls it smoke. Uh, smoke, by definition, is a gaseous body, a dominantly gaseous body, composed of hot gas uh, that uh, has some specks of carbon in it or specks of solid matter in it and uh, has got a certain degree of darkness. Uh, like when you produce smoke by charring a piece of wood or a piece of uh, cloth or a piece of paper, uh, you get the smoke. Uh, so the Quran said smoke. And as Hubble telescope was sent uh, above uh, uh, the cloud zone and above the uh, pollution zones in the atmosphere. That was in which year, Doctor? Uh, this was uh, almost uh, 15 years ago. Only 15 years ago. Only 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, was sent outside the uh, polluted zone of the earth and outside the cloud zone as well. Uh, then he photographed 
at the farthest extremity of the observed universe, this initial smoke. So if the Quran uh, says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ دُخَانِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, turned to the sky while it was still in a smoky condition. This is a miracle by itself. Because uh -huh. who would have known this fact 14 centuries ago other than the Creator Himself? Then, then He ordered the earth and the firmament or the heavenly bodies, all of them. He ordered them come willingly or unwillingly. They said we will come in willing obedience. Um, and of course one would wonder, does the earth and the heavenly bodies have a language to speak? Yes, and in which, uh, way, in which way would they will obey Allah? Uh, by, by submitting to his instructions, to his, his orders. Mm. Revolving See, in the certain orbits. Yes. And, Uh, being really as in the way Allah has willed it be, to be. Yes. So, uh, uh, but of course we as Muslims would not exclude uh, the uh, idea that every existing being in this uh, universe uh, make it solid or gas or liquid, uh, plant, animal or human, uh, each uh, one of these creation uh, has got its own language. Uh, it knows its creator. It uh, worships that creator in a way which would not understand. Yes. So if the earth would say, uh, I will come willingly in willing obedience, and the heavenly bodies will say, we also come in willing obedience, uh, I do not exclude the possibility that they will utter that in a language which would not understand. Yes, their own way of praying and their own way of tasbih. Yes, but of course what we understand is that submitting to the guidance, to the instruction, is a way of uh, answering the divine instruction. Yes, yes. I, think yes so. I have a question. So if we were to, the, the universe is steadily expanding, and if we were to reverse this process, then happens the Big Bang. Yes. But what is the scientific explanation, the cause of the Big Bang? What caused the Big Bang? and And after this big bang, how come Earth has its own properties and Mars has its own properties and every single planet, have, they have different properties? Yes. And in Earth, it is so uh, systematic. Yes. While in the other planet, life mm -hmm. even does, uh, there is no proof of life. Yes. Uh, you see, for a secular scientist, he will say uh, the critical mass and the critical state in which this initial body was in. They say, if you imagine that all the matter in the universe and all the energy was condensed into this initial uh, entity, it must be in, an, an, in a critical condition. Uh, th that's what their, their mind would tell them, because they want to exclude the Creator. They want to exclude the divine in instruction. Because the, the Quran says, فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ إِتِيَا تَوَعَا Then Allah ordered the earth and the heavens to come into being. Willingly or unwillingly. And they answered, we will come in willing obedience. So we as Muslims believe that this is the divine plan. This is the divine, uh, 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 the divine uh, uh, instruction. See, But for an, an unbeliever or a disbeliever or an atheist or an agnostic or a secular scientist, his, his mind would uh, make it easy for him to understand. The, the fact that condensing all the matter and energy in the universe into one little entity will make it in an unstable condition, in a critical condition that will cause it to, to explode. But as you said justifiably, it, explosion by itself um, means um, disruption, means disorder. If you explode something, you destroy its order into a, a chaotic Uh, unordered uh, arrangement, you yeah. see. But for an explosion to lead to the build-up of a wonderful universe, each uh, heavenly body or each, uh, uh, the earth and the rest of the heavenly bodies, each has its own mass, its own volume, its own chemical composition, its own physical characteristics, its own orbit to revolve in, its own speed of running in that orbit, so that the whole universe will be in a coherent manner. Uh, you see, in a, in a well-planned, well-organized manner, this can defy the fact that this is a mere accident or a mere chance or a mere explosion without a divine, a divine instruction. Also, this is a miracle. 
because after the Big Bang, each planet uh, uh, received their own property. Yes. After the Big Bang. Yes. And uh, is there any wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this Big Bang happen? Is there a wisdom? Definitely there is a wisdom because every action taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise and there is wisdom behind it. But inshallah we will be handling the issue of the uh, Big Bang Theory in the coming episode. Yes, and so that we may not be repeating ourselves, I will delay answering your question, inshallah, in the, the next episode. I think Mustafa yes. has a comment. Okay. I have a comment okay. here. Uh, I'm just very amazed of the, uh, with the accuracy of the uh, words uh, of the Quran, uh, specifically when, when you just said uh, about the smoke, when you said that uh, they called it before dust, then later on, they found out that it is uh, uh, actually smoke. Yes. So when you go back to the Quran words, you use the word smoke specifically. Yes. So this is amazing. You see, actually, every word, every letter, every sign in the Quran is precise. Mm -hmm. uh, Inshallah, we'll come in some of the coming episodes to discuss this issue. Mm -hmm. Why did Allah choose here smoke and not use any other word? Mm -hmm. It cannot be replaced by any other word. If you, even if, if you have a proposition, you see, you cannot change it with another proposition. Uh, scientists remain for decades saying the dust theory, mm. the dust theory. And the Quran, 14 centuries ago, say smoke. Only until, until 15 years ago. F yes. Only until 15 years ago, they changed the term. Uh, um, only 15 years ago, yes. When it was physically photographed, yes, it was actually physically photographed, and you cannot use a word for it. it's not dust, right? Because it's hot, it's dark, um, it's mainly composed of gas. Uh, it has got some uh, these solid particles in it, which is the exact scientific definition of a smoke. So now, now the the scholars or the scientists are using the word smoke. Yes, yes, Great. yes. Yeah. I have got the photograph uh, taken by Hubble, the, the initial smoke from which creation of the universe started. And they admit they were wrong in using the word oh, dust. They admit they are wrong, of course, they were using the word uh, dust, because mm -hmm. it was not dust. And how do they react when, you, when they find such studies? You see, sadly enough, we have not done our duty uh -huh. in exposing the beauty of the Quran to those people. And we have really uh, been lazy and been... Uh, uh, not taking things seriously mm. uh, because it's uh, our obligation to bring these scientific notions to the notice of those people yes. because uh, we believe that the essence of every human being is goodness. Yes. Every human being, Allah has created us with the initial goodness in the heart and mind of every one of us. And if you can reach that goodness by a simple sign like this, Wallahi, this word alone smoke can change the belief of hundreds of scientists. Mm -hmm. If we can bring it to their notice in a logical, scientific um, manner that can testify to the scientific precision of the Holy Quran. Yes. So we'll bring them back to Islam actually because everybody was born uh, Muslim uh, naturally. <laughs> uh, as I said earlier, you see, this is the way we can give Islam to others right. uh, at a time when the image of Islam is being highly tarnished in most of the media. Um, the attack on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taking place as happened in Denmark and in other European countries. And if we could present that Prophet in his proper dimensions to those people, they never would have dared to do that. If we present the Quran in the language those people can understand, they, be, they want scientific proofs. And here's a scientific proof. The expansion of the universe was not known until 19... 35. Of course, uh, the scientists started to ponder about it at the beginning of the 20th century, but it was not confirmed until 1935. Uh, the uh, uh, creation of the universe out of an initial smoke was not confirmed until 15 years ago. And uh, for these two facts alone to be mentioned in a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago is a convincing testimony to any sane person that this book cannot be the work of man. Doctor, do you think the smoke fact can be changed by time again? The smoke what? The smoke fact can be changed by time? Uh, no, it cannot change by time cannot because it's already been photographed. It's a fact. Yes. It has been documented. And it became a fact. It, it became, became a fact. fact now. So the dust was not a fact at that time. It was just a theory. The dust was a theory. A theory. It was a fact. Yes. But the smoke but now is a fact. Once you have seen it, 
you have photographed it uh, that became a fact yes like the expansion of the universe yes. it is not a theory it is an established fact. now it's a fact established fact the scientists who discovered this or who claimed to make this discovery that is actually smoke they were ignorant of the verses uh, in this in the quran of course um, as i said earlier we uh, muslims did not uh, present the Qur'an to others uh, in a language they can understand. And the dominant view in the West is that the Qur'an is the work of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, they don't believe it as a, a, a divine uh, word. Uh, so uh, this is the dominant belief. We, the, we as Muslims do not do our duty to present the proof that it is a divine word. It's uh, the word of the Creator in its divine purity and uh, a testimony for the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to do our work I think and this, do our duty. This episode, or, uh, it's part of uh, our work and our duty just to deliver the message. I would yes. say so, uh -huh. it's part of it. Inshallah. 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 So we, this is, uh, we come to the end of our episode. And inshallah, the next episode we continue with our guests. Thank you, Professor Zaghloul Nagar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you our dear much. guests, thank you very much. Thank you, viewers. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,